So today, I'm gonna show you how to make this portal transition using free plugins that I made. Now, I don't wanna go over too much about actually making it because, well, it's a plugin, it's just drag and drop. Today, we're mostly gonna be focusing on compositing. If you're unfamiliar with this, it's essentially just selling the effect, making it look better. High quality intro, intro, intro? Alrighty, inside of DaVinci Resolve, you gotta mark out where you want the transition to start and end. I already have all that done, hence the two markers. So I'm gonna pop this into video track two, hit B, make two cuts, highlight both clips, right click, new fusion clip, and head on into fusion. First of all, we don't need this merge because we're gonna use a tracker node. So, uh, tracker. I'm gonna place it down here, change my adaptive mode to best match, bring down my match tolerance to about 0.5 and track forwards. If you want, you can also add a second tracking node, place it somewhere nearby, track backwards, and now you'll account for scale. Anyways, the next thing to do is switch your operation from none to best match. And now if we connect our media into to the tracker, um, our video is all tracked in. At this point, you can add the actual portal effect. So if you go to my discord, there's a whole bunch of free effects that you can download, find the folder you have it saved to drag it and drop it into your timeline now this doesn't look super awesome because it, it's missing glow and it just looks like a weird blobby circle so to add glow again find the, the free glow plugin day glow drop that in afterwards and now you can go through and just kind of tweak all the settings and make it how you want to look so we got this going on right now but there's a bit of an issue we can't really tell what's going on with our second video because we're in the smoke mode most of the time so we're missing the important things like neon's hands to fix that we can add a transform node after the media node and just squish and squash the video adjusting our size and aspect ratio so it looks a little bit like this now the next thing to do is to keyframe this in and out because uh if we go back to the edit page move one frame back no portal portal um that does not look good so what i like to do is start from the top and work my way down in the transform node i'm going to add a size keyframe in the middle then i'm going to go back to the beginning bring this down to zero and bring this to one we also need to adjust our aspect ratio because I, I messed with that. So in the middle, I'm gonna add an aspect ratio keyframe and then go to the end, reset this to one. So now when we watch it back right here, you can see that uh, it, it fixes itself. Now this comes in square and then becomes circular and that's because with our portal, uh, you can see the lip size right here. So we gotta keyframe the lip size now. So you can just add a couple keyframes and then make that zero. Go to the end, and we're just gonna size this up until we can't see it anymore. We also have the ripples and the scan lines. So the same thing, frame 16, we're gonna add a line blend keyframe and a ripple amplitude keyframe. Go to the end of the video, bring the blend down to zero and the ripple down to zero. Now, if we watch this back, uh, not super good because our graph is linear. So we got to fix that. If we open up spline, we can, um, you know, just check everything that has keyframes. But just as an example for the transform, I'm going to hit zoom to fit and I'm going to highlight everything, hit F on my keyboard and this middle keyframe, I'm going to drag out to the left and um you know what the last ones i'm gonna make the graph look a little bit like that so it's just a nice arc and um you can see if we watch it back now it slowly comes in hangs out and then it gets bigger so you just got to do that with everything you made keyframes for but once you have that all fixed you should have something that looks like this ba bam baby so this is the part that's a little bit more nitty gritty compositing first of all because this is kind of like an energy glowing thing we could sell the effect more by adding a little bit of displacement or a lot of bit of displacement whatever so before the tracker we're going to add a displace node then i'm going to put a little space whoop put a little space here, drop in a fast noise node, connect that to the displace, and you notice how something changed. Well, that's because the fast noise pattern is getting applied to this. So just as an example, if I bring up 
my scale, you can see some waves are starting to form. If I adjust my brightness, that adjusts the offset of everything. I'm just gonna leave that at zero. But contrast adjusts the strength of everything. And then detail, well, that's obviously the detail. Now, I don't want this radial pattern, so I'm going to switch it to XY. And then I'm gonna bring down my Y refraction just a little bit. So now what's happening is the displacement is happening more up and down like, sort of like heat. Now, if we play this back, the displacement isn't really happening. It's just kind of there, like it's applying a pattern. So in our fast noise, what we can do is bring up our seethe rate. And that means this pattern is going to start to move around, which means our displacement moves around, but it's heat. So it needs to be going up. And just a real simple thing that we can do is add some keyframes. So at the beginning, we add a center keyframe and we go to the end and just move this up a little lot of it. And now uh, our heat looks like it's rising. The only problem with this is that the displacement is happening everywhere, but we want to keep it kind of local to this portal. So we can take the output of our glow and connect it to the blue arrow of our fast noise. And uh, now it's kind of covered up. So we have to add a erode slash dilate. And if we bring this up um, a lot, we're going to make it point two. You can see now we have displacement happening outside, but this is a little harsh. So something else that we could do is add like a blur afterwards and bump up the blur size. So now it becomes less intense looking. When we play this back, uh, it, it's wavy and it's giving off uh, that energy vibe. The last problem comes down to one thing. The sheriff is behind the portal. So therefore it's getting displacement applied to it and an unnecessary amount of glow. So we need to rotoscope the sheriff out and add it back in. I have a video on four different ways to rotoscope things, but I'm going to use a studio feature called Magic Mask, but you use whatever you want. Not gonna go over this in super detail because I don't think everyone has Magic Mask or the studio version of Resolve, but you basically just make this little line and then you can track forwards and backwards. Okay, so now that I have the Sheriff rotoscoped, I can add a merge node and connect the magic mask to the blue arrow so it's sitting on top of it. We still have the issue of displacement. If we look really close here, you can see there's some waviness on the sheriff and that's because underneath it, well, this has displacement. The other problem is that our sheriff doesn't have any light wrap. Because of how bright this is, there should be some spillover onto our sheriff. So let's fix the light wrap issue. In my Discord, there is also another free plugin called Light Wrap. All you have to do is take the output of your tracker, connect that to the green arrow here. Bam, that's kind of intense, but you know, we can adjust the threshold here or we can adjust the light strength or the light size. I'm gonna just check out this before and after. That little touch right there sells the effect. The displacement on the other hand is just easy. Uh, all we have to do is take the output, connect it to the blue arrow. Now what's happening is that the displacement is localized to just the sheriff. So we need to invert this. And now we kind of have that same issue. So what we could do is add just like a, a blur and possibly even um, an erode slash dilate. See? It's it's going away. The very last thing we have to do is uh, move our sheriff because what's it doing here still? So frame 16, that's when I did all those other keyframes. I'm going to add a transform node before the light wrap, add a center keyframe, go to the end and just bring the sheriff off screen. And same thing, whoa, um, just adjust the graph here so that it fits a little bit better. Anyways, that's how you make the portal transition using some free plugins. That's the end of the video, goodbye.